Have you ever noticed how many baby things are for sale in your produce department at your grocery store? Baby spinach, baby kale, baby arugula. Brand new sprouts are super delicious <laughs> and not just for you. For all of the creepy crawly critters and the different things that we refer to as pests. I recommend that everyone be prepared with a few things before you start planting your garden. That way you have what you need on hand as soon as the issues arise. There are two kinds of pests. First category is invertebrate and that covers all insects. The second category is vertebrate or anything with a skeleton. So that encompasses mice, rats, squirrels, bunny rabbits, even birds. Anything that might want to eat your plants. That is the best. There are a variety of treatments available to deal with invertebrate pests, um, which I will delve into in another video. Today, I wanna to talk about the creepy crawlies, the vertebrate pests. It can be surprisingly infuriating to watch a little bird fly off with a leaf of newly sprouted kale, or to come up and check on your tomatoes and see that they all have little chunks missing from them. <laughs> so let's talk about how we can prevent that. The only way that you can truly stop vertebrate pests is by creating a physical barrier. And I recommend that everyone prepares themselves with a few items in their garden to prevent these pests from eventually nibbling on your food. Because every second counts, every minute counts when something is nibbling your plants. So if you have these items on hand, you'll be ready to go. Chicken wire. This is also known as poultry netting, um, but most people should know what you're talking about. If you go into a hardware store and say, I need some chicken wire. This stuff can be laid on top of a bed. It can be easily bent and molded around a taller plant. As you can see, I have attached it to two different types of stakes that can be driven into the soil. The higher the number of the gauge means the thinner the wire. And that means the easier it is to work with. I recommend with this to use a gauge that's between 20 and 30. Um, and also this traditional hexagonal pattern is a lot easier to work with than some of the square patterns that are available. So it's great to have a few yards of this. Now, you can probably see this is pretty big. If you think that you might have mice or rats an issue in your garden, you might want to think about doing something with a little bit smaller format. I've heard that mice can squeeze through a space as big as a dime. So um, in that case, there's another product available called hardware cloth. This is, I mean, it's, it has different uses, but it's essentially the same product. It's a, it's a wire mesh and this is in a square format and these are much smaller. So this is a little bit harder to bend and work with than the traditional chicken wire, just bear in mind. Bird or deer netting. This is essentially the same idea, only it's made out of very thin plastic. So it's a mesh and this is basically sold to drape over fruit trees or you know attached to stakes around a vegetable garden the whole idea is that it keeps out birds or deer <laughs> i will say that i have seen this completely chewed through when i've tried to use it in my garden so i would say that it's not impervious to all pests you can also see it gets very tangled so i find this material incredibly annoying however it's cheaper, it's easier to work with. It may be a smart first line of defense for someone to try. And then you can always move up to chicken wire hardware cloth um, if necessary. When you have a really low growing plant, like a lettuce or beets that just have a little bit um, of the soil, you can sometimes get away with just lying a piece of it flat on top of the bed and there you've done it you've uh, created the barrier. But as the plants grow taller, or if they're just a generally taller crop, you're gonna have to create some sort of a support structure, which brings me to stakes, garden stakes. The wooden kind like this is very handy because you can attach things like staples into it. I also have a bunch of these, which I think they're metal, it's a metal core um, with some sort of a plastic over coating on it. These work really well. They're also part of an integrated set where I have these rungs and so you can 
can use them for tomatoes and all sorts of things. So they're really handy. They can be reused for lots of purposes. You have a few of these types of things on hand. You know, look, I could create something. This is really skinny plant, but look, I've just created this growing at the center of here. It's, it's protected inside. Um, or I could, this could be half of it and then I could wrap the other half around like this. You need some stakes. You also need some way to attach it. The staple gun is probably the most convenient. I was able to wind this one, kind of weave it through the chicken wire itself. Couldn't do that with hardware cloth. It's way too rigid. You can use twisty tie. It's like a roll of twisty tie like you would get on a bread container, but it's just in bulk. This can be really helpful to just attach things. Zip ties. Um, although they're only one use, so I don't really like those as much. Twine, twine is an amazing thing to have in the garden. You can always use lengths of twine to attach those pieces. Um, my clothespins, which you may have, you may remember, I use also to label my little seedlings. These can also be clipped on and clipped together to attach these things. So you can get creative, um, hammer and nails even. You can obviously go there. One last thing I want to mention that's really, really handy for protecting if it's just like a fruit, for instance, a tomato plant that starts to grow the tomatoes. You really only need to protect the tomatoes. No pests are going to go for the leaves. So I find that these little plastic berry and produce containers that most of our produce comes in these days at the grocery store can be reused. They pro provide a perfect environment for your little fruit. They're clear. They have holes in them so the sun can get in, the air can get in. You need to have circulation, so it definitely needs to have air holes. If you have one that doesn't, you can poke holes in it. And then it opens and closes. So I can open it, put it around the tomato and go and shut it and boom, I've got a sweet little protective fortress for my beautiful heirloom tomato and that mouse is not getting a single bite. So you can start collecting these now and by the time your tomato plants are growing fruit later in the season, you can have one of these for each one of them. I myself was employing a mixture of these different techniques in my garden for many years before I finally decided to splurge and treat myself to the ultimate gardener's luxury, a garden enclosure. So garden enclosure is essentially a much larger version of the structures that I've just described to you how to build. You have a wooden frame and you have a skin of hardware cloth or chicken wire and that protects the entire garden, not just a single plant or a single bed. I had seen pictures of beautiful enclosures online and I was ready to get to work designing my own custom enclosure for my rooftop garden. So the structure is really the same. I have a wooden frame that supports a skin of hardware cloth. And that entire thing protects everything that's inside. I did go with the hardware cloth because I live in a very urban place right against an alley that is shared with fast food restaurant and all of its dumpsters. So uh, rats and mice were a big concern for me, but so was birds and squirrels. <laughs> I really have uh, the Mecca for pests here and they were all so happy that I was growing all these beautiful vegetables for them to munch on. door on this end for a couple of reasons. Number one, the hose bib is out here, so I have to peek out here to turn on the hose. Number two, I have this dream of one day having a pulley system installed out here for easy loading up of heavy things like soil bags and easy loading down of trash. So that's it. In the end, I think it really turned out gorgeous. And my ratio of nibbled tomatoes has definitely dropped drastically. So what do you think? Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content on home gardening and landscape design. And I'll see you next week. Hi. We don't care. She's like a honey badger, she don't care.